Hey everyone, this is Jonna from Tutor N, and we're going to talk about the basics of emphysema. So as you already know, um, or you may or may not know by looking at some of my videos, I always focus on first just the basics of the concept because that is going to be so crucial to your understanding and so crucial to your ability to critically think and add more advanced concepts. So the basics is where you should start, especially if you're having a hard time with this topic or other topics that I have videos on, start with, with the basics, understanding just what is the, the fundamental idea or the fundamental issue behind what it is we're talking about. So this we're gonna talk about emphysema. Now emphysema belongs to a group of disorders that fall under COPD. So that's probably a term that we're familiar with, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Emphysema is just one of the problems or one of the diseases that falls under COPD. So essentially what happens with emphysema is that these alveoli, these air sacs that we have, the very distal portion of our airway becomes very floppy and they lose elasticity. So it becomes weak and eventually they will rupture. So if we just kind of get back to A and P for a second, if we see what we have here, we have our, our trachea, our airway, right? Our left and right uh, bronchi, and then those branch out into bronchioles. And at the very end of these bronchioles, so the very end, these distal distal portions, if we zoomed in and looked at them to see what sits at the very end, we would see these, the alveoli, right? And so this, this was where air gets exchanged. So this is where O2 and carbon dioxide, the exchange of that happens here. And so you see these little red lines that I have, these red squiggly lines on these alveoli or these air sacs, those are capillaries. So when we breathe in air, we're breathing in the air, they make it all the way down to our alveoli. The O2 gets uh, absorbed through the alveolar wall and it gets um, planted or deposited, if you will, into our capillary so we can get oxygen in our bloodstream. And we'll pick up carbon dioxide and exhale that out. So it's it's a, just a swap, if you will. That's uh, ventilation when we talk about that. So I take this away. If we talk about what happens with emphysema, it's these airways, these guys that are really going to get damaged. So instead of looking like these really nice little clusters, like kind of grape clusters, you end up with this big um, ruptured, overgrown sack. So you don't just have all these little tiny clusters. That actually is gonna do a couple of things. It's going to decrease the surface area of the lung, and in turn, it's gonna decrease the amount of oxygen that we are able to get into our bloodstream. Because these alveoli lose elasticity, then the air that we breathe in is actually going to get trapped. So there's a problem with the exchange. So the air that we breathe in, let's say this is our air, is going to get trapped inside this big cluster of an alveoli. And so that means that if we have air trapped here, then we're gonna have a hard time letting it go. So let's, let's draw a better picture of that so we can get a better idea. So I'm just going to erase this. And let's draw what that, that exchange starts to look like. So if we go ahead and just uh, make this an airway connection, like our distal portion, and then here's our big alveoli, not this beautiful you know, sacs that we have anymore. And so when we breathe in, right, we breathe in air, and we breathe in through our trachea, down through our airway, right, through our bronchus, whether it's left or right, down through our bronchioles, the air's traveling, and this is our distal portion, so the air comes all the way down to the very end here in our alveoli, and this is where we have air. And these capillaries that I have, well, it's going to go through my alveolar wall, and it's going to drop off oxygen to the capillaries that surround it, and then we're gonna pick up carbon dioxide. So I'll just make that this color, like a green color. So we're gonna pick up carbon dioxide, and the job is that we're going to need to breathe that out, to exhale it. So we inhale the good, exhale the bad. Well, there's a problem with emphysema is that that's gonna become trapped. So we should be exhaling out the CO2 in the air here, should be exhaling out, but it gets trapped because the elasticity is gone. So that means that the air that we're breathing in 
can't make it. And so then we're gonna have a decreased amount of oxygen because we've got trapped air and we have uh, a lack of new, fresh, clean, uh, oxygen-rich air coming in. And that creates a problem with this person's oxygen saturation. And this can create a problem with acidosis. So one of the biggest causes of this damage to our alveoli is smoking, specifically tobacco smoke. Um, in some individuals, it's not as common. There can be a gene deficiency with the alpha-1 antitrypsin, and that can cause emphysema as well. So what do we do to treat this? We can't cure it, right? We can do treatment modalities and different types of therapies to slow the progression of it, but there's nothing that we can do to, to stop it, which is why educating our patients um, on the dangers of smoking and to stop smoking and to give them the support and resources they need to make that decision is super, super critical. But we can give bronchodilators. It's really a better treatment for patients that have bronchitis with emphysema um, because bronchodilators alone really are not going to help the alveoli issue. Which, by the way, not only now do we have this issue of this, you know, weak, ruptured alveoli, but also it can collapse and weaken our airways here. So if that happens, then we're really at risk for things like constriction and decreased airway movement. So another thing we can do is we can give corticosteroids to help to open up the airways. Specifically here, we think about our bronchioles to open them up if they become constricted because that's going to help with air movement as much as possible. And one of the uh, techniques that we can teach our patients with emphysema, and this works if they've got emphysema with or without um, bronchitis, is pursed lip breathing. And you may have heard of that. So what happens with pursed lip breathing is that we'll tell our patients to breathe in normally through their nose, a count of two. So breathe in through your nose, one, two, and then out through pursed lips, just like you're blowing on a pinwheel or blowing uh, bubbles for the count of four. So in through two, through your nose, out for four, through pursed lips. What does that do? Um, it kind of increases the pressure uh, in the lungs, so in the airway specifically. So if I erase this, what happens is by increasing the pressure here in our airways, let's just attack on some more. If we can increase the pressure here, then it helps to keep this airway open longer, right? So that we have a better chance of getting rid of this trapped air. Now we may not be able to get rid of all of it, but it helps that we're able to move at least some of that trapped air out so we can get the oxygen rich air in. Now, another thing as far as oxygen is concerned, oxygen therapy is something that we do for our patients that have COPD. O2 therapy is actually a big part of what we're gonna do for this patient, COPD and emphysema. However, we do have to be really careful about the amount of O2 that we give somebody that has emphysema. And we have to think about, well, what's the reason for that? Now, normally, as far as our nursing interventions are concerned, we can give a patient with emphysema uh, up to two liters of oxygen supplemental if they need it. Now, someone with emphysema or COPD disorders, their O2 saturations can you know, teeter between 88 to 92 percent, and that's good for them. Now, if we see that they're declining and they need oxygen supplemental, then we can give up to two liters. The problem with giving too much oxygen, which is probably something that you've heard or read in you know, your classes or nursing school or from your instructor, is that it can create a really big problem with their breathing. You may have heard that they breathe on a um, hypoxic drive, for instance, that they need to have low oxygen in order to, to breathe normally. So, that's true, but maybe just a little bit more clarification on that. So what can happen is if you give somebody with emphysema too much O2, then it sounds good in theory, right? You give them oxygen, and that's great because your, your blood, your hemoglobin is going to take it. You're going to soak it up, and it's going to be a very, very welcome guest. But you're supposed to be taking in that O2, and you're replacing the CO2 that you have too much of which does happen in emphysema. Remember, they have too much CO2 because they can't get rid of this trapped air, and this trapped air has got CO2 in it that needs to come out. So they're a little bit uh, acidotic as a result. So you're thinking, we'll give them a lot of CO2 to help balance that out. 
Well, what happens is, is that your, your, the blood, the, the body is going to soak up all that O2 and those cells are going to soak up all that O2 in your red blood cells. And they're going to want to get rid of the CO2. But remember the issue is that you have air trapping and emphysema. So now you're increasing the amount of CO2 that needs to get exhaled or excreted, but it's not going to go anywhere because you have these alveoli that are weak and ruptured and floppy and the air is going to get stuck there. So you can actually cause this acidic problem to become even higher. So you can increase the acidosis in the person with uh, emphysema if you give them too much CO2. So that's the deal with that. So we know the causes of emphysema. Big things, smoking. Um, also exposure to smoke, exposure to harmful uh, you know, air pollutants as well can be a cause of that. So that's going to be a huge part of the education that we have to provide our teaching. Uh, education we need to provide teaching to our clients. Um, and we know the medications that we can give to help kind of keep it at bay and still the progression and the purpose of the O2. So that is emphysema, our basics. <laughs>